Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to today's webinar, CAS Cycle O, What You Need to Know. This is our latest in our series of educational webinars from Anchor Software. My name is Cindy Prado. I'm a technical support specialist at Anchor Computer Software, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Our webinar today is being presented by Earl Johnson Jr. with the U.S. Postal Service. And today's webinar will discuss more information about Cycle O and information you might need to know. A few notes before we begin, when you're logged into the webinar, where you will automatically be placed on mute mode. That simply helps us cut down on background no noise. Any questions that you might have during the webinar will be addressed at the end of the webinar. So if you have a question during the webinar, please type your question into the questions area of the webinar console, and they'll be addressed and answered at the conclusion of the presentation. One last note, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available for viewing or reviewing on our website in the next coming days. Before we begin, let me tell you a little bit about Anchor, and then I'll introduce you to Earl Johnson, our presenter. Anchor Software was founded in 1998. We have over 1,500 product installs and over 65 software installs. We provide software solutions for data quality, postal compliance, mail processing, and document design. We actively engage in shaping our industry through participation in leadership in DTAC, MSMA, AMI, and numerous other PCs. We provide 24-hour support seven days a week. And fun fact, this year we are celebrating our 25th anniversary for Anchor Software. So now that I've told you a little bit about Anchor Software, let me introduce you to Earl Johnson, Jr. Earl, take it away. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first off, thank you for the invitation to speak with you all today. And secondly, thank you for joining today's call. So uh, my name is Earl Johnson, as stated, uh, and I am the Director for Address Services, Services and Technology for the United States Postal Service. Uh, a little bit of background about me, I've been a part of uh, address management and address services for going on 27 years. Started out as a contractor for the Postal Service, and in 2013, I transitioned over to a career employee for the Postal Service, where I held several managers' positions, and most recently, I was appointed as director for address and technology. And so CAS certification is one of the projects and programs under my oversight, and it is led by Star Blackwood, and I believe a lot of you may have interacted directly with Star and her team. But today I will be presenting to you all on some of the core benefits of CAS Cycle O, and I'll give you a little bit of background about how CAS started. So with that, uh, great. First slide here, we'll jump into the CAS. Uh, simply put, is the certification and verification that the vendor software is compliant with being able to accurately, with accuracy, uh, return the five-digit zip, zip plus four and delivery point code for a given address. Also included with that is the carry route information that will be appearing onto the mail piece. CAS software is requirement uh, in order to obtain automation and pricing discounts from the Postal Service. CAS started back in 1996. I, I think that's not too much earlier than when Anchor Software was started, and congratulations on your 25th anniversary for Anchor Software. Since 1996, there have been 13 test cycles, CAS cycles, with the last one being 2011 uh, CAS cycle in, which all software is currently working off of today. Now, that does not mean there have not been innovation, there has not been enhancement and improvement to software, CAS software, that are out there today. Uh, like Anchor, uh, a lot of vendors are, work hard to improve the software to distribute and be to their customers. 
to improve the customer experience. However, the software requirements, as deemed by the Postal Service, those requirements have not changed since 2011. So after many, many discussions with the mailing industry and software vendors, it was determined early on in 2019 that a new cycle probably need to be implemented. And that cycle, cycle O, that we're talking about today, will encompass more data attributes that would be more benefit beneficial to the mailing industry to give them more insight about the actual address they intend to mail to uh, upon processing. So that leads us into the benefits of cycle O. So one, above all, we're promoting address quality. So quality addressing not only internal to the mailing to the mailer in their system and databases, but also as those quality addresses enter the mail stream, it would further reduce uh, undeliverable as, as addressed mail, UAA, uh, and thereby reduce rehandling of the mail and the cost to rehandle that mail, both on the postal service side as well as the mailer side. So where are we today? And this slide was created uh, a few weeks back. So the 100, right now we stand at about a 138 software platforms that have been certified uh, by the postal service. And if we look at the count from cycle in that certified during the cycle in period in 2011, we would expect to receive an additional 35 additional platforms to be certified. However, we do not expect to receive more than that. So we may not reach the 35 because they may no longer be seeking certification. Uh, again, this is just based off the uh, vendors list of the software certi that was certified in 2011. Next slide. So let's talk a little bit about the benefits. And so again, we want to make sure at listening to the mailers in the industry, uh, they wanted more information about the deliverability of the address. And so we're going to step a few of these through a few of these enhancements. Um, one being door not accessible. Basically, it is exactly what it says. We cannot access the door. We cannot physically get to the building or the residence to service that particular resident or building, uh, either through a gate being closed or it's not accessible through a gate or for, for various reasons, road closures. Uh, there could be many scenarios to, to, to indicate that we cannot get there. Uh, no secure location. So a lot of instances have been uh, placed on the security of not only the mail, but postal assets in terms of its equipment and above all the security of its, its carriers. So uh, we have a flag in the database that allows to indicate when there's no secure location to effectively deliver the mail. Uh, Non-delivery days. So we all expect Sunday to be that one non-delivery day for a resident or business um, and then we're primarily talking about businesses, um, but Saturdays, as well as some Mondays, uh, for some customers such as salons, they do not receive mail delivery on those days. And so we have an indicator to show when those days are occurring. Uh, PO box only zones. So uh, we have actual zones of zip codes that we only deliver to the PO box. And while there may be an assigned address or street address assigned to a given resident or business through the municipality, the Postal Service established a policy to only deliver to the PO box for that particular zone due to business need. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that even further uh, on the next couple of slides. So the PO box throwback is a different model in terms of the resident or the business has elected to get their mail service through a PO box versus the actual physical address. And so in this scenario, we flag those uh, street addresses uh, with a T for throwback on the database. And so when those addresses are submitted to the software, 
it will return that T value to give the mailer an indicator that although it, you're submitting a street style address, it will be delivered by the postal service to the PO box address. And no, the PO box address would not be returned as a result of the output. It would just be an indicator that it will be delivered to a PO box. Um, and then we'll talk more about the enhanced DPV flags in our next uh, few slides here. So, next slide. All right. So, continue on uh, with the benefits. So, cross state address. So, historically, the city state of an address for the postal service to deliver mail for the purpose of delivery of the mail has always been representative of the post office that is servicing that address or business. And in 99% of the cases, that post office resides in the same city, same county, and most definitely the same state of the addresses or residence in which it serves. We have identified about 6,300 addresses in which the post office that service those 5,300 addresses actually reside in an entirely different state. And now, again, historically, addresses, city, state, last line for the purpose of mail delivery was exclusive for that purpose, mail delivery. And so internally to the postal service, it has no impact in terms of our ability to deliver the mail. In fact, it was cost um, it was more cost efficient and operationally efficient to handle this in this scenario. However, as addresses, zip codes, and, and, and so forth are being leveraged by industries outside of the postal service, um, this begins to cause the problems with those 6300 residents uh, in terms of getting license for their vehicles, DMV. Uh, insurance quotes, uh, services, other services uh, that requires an address, um, this, this presented a problem. And so we had to come up with a solution, which we did, in order to allow for those residents to use their residence city state as part of their address. Um, and so with the Cycle O software, CAS Cycle O software, we wanted to ensure that the software can accommodate these changes as well. And so this should be very transparent to the mailers, uh, but it's something that we had to ensure that the software could handle to address this customer experience issue. Which leads me into total DPS. Uh, total DPS, which is a, again, another customer experience enhancement that we are deploying. So every delivery point or every address has a, an 11 digit uh, delivery point with the two digits on the end being unique to that delivery point in 99 or 98% of the cases. There is a small percentage of addresses that have a 11 digit conflict in which they share the exact same 11 digits. Now, from a postal service delivery uh, standpoint, that is not an issue. We can effectively deliver that mail and have it sorted DPS to that delivery point without a problem. When informed delivery service came along, it leverages the 11 digit of those residents in order to render the image of the mail pieces that is slated to arrive into the mailbox either that same day or next day. And so with the issues of some of the 11 digits conflicting on the database, we had to exclude those customers from participating in the informed delivery service. The reason being it would have validate, violated our privacy policy because we would actually have been sharing the images of all the impacted customers that shared that 11 digits. Uh, to each one of them, so they could see each other's mail. So we didn't want that to occur, so we had to exclude those conflicts from participating in the service, therefore excluding those customers from participating in the service. 
And we had to come up with, with a solution because we could not uh, continue to prevent those customers from taking the full advantage of the services that the Postal Service is offering. And therefore, we came up with logic that broke that conflict. And with this cash cycle software, we want to ensure that they, the software could actually can handle um, that logic. In addition to the software uh, accommodating the logic, we are also working with our engineering partners internally to ensure that our sort program are effectively handling the logic as well because it has an upgrade enhancement to those sorts programs in order to make this fully functional. And then we had the, the military ad, the military came to us and asked for two additional address formats, UPR, OPC. Uh, this is primarily for their own internal processing once they receive the mail on their basis. And so this has, again, no impact to the mailing industry. Uh, we just wanted to ensure that the software can accommodate these two new address formats. Next slide. Okay, PO, PO box only zone. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about this one because there's a slight change to um, the requirements prior to cycle up. So if a street style address is submitted to the software with cycle O, then it would not return a zip code score for that zip code. Uh, and therefore, that particular address will no longer qualify for postage discount because we do not deliver to the street address. We only deliver to the PO box address. So the, net, the customer should be providing um, the PO box address as its mailing address and not their street address, okay? Now, and we'll talk about this a little bit further into the slides as well. I get the question a lot of the time, well, is the street address on the database? Yes, it could be on the database as a no stat address that is not actually being serviced by the postal service. And I'll talk about why that's added to the address and um, to the database and how it's flagged on the database uh, as we go through the slides. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, validation of a five digit. What is considered a valid? Five digit, and so with the software upgrade update, it must adhere to the DMM 602 requirements, which states that the street, the city, the state, and the zip code must all correspond in order to be considered a valid zip code. And this is in order to, uh, for the purpose of pre-sort and automation discount, all those attributes must correspond to be considered. A valid five digit. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, this is just another slide to give more detail about those, uh, if that information, the address information that we talked about at the beginning. Uh, door not accessible, no delivery days, no secure location, throwback. The big change here is in cycle O, these were all optional outputs from the software. I'm, I'm sorry, with cycle in, these were all optional out outputs of the software. With cycle O, it's a requirement. So by default, the output of the software will contain these particular attributes about the, the address in question. Okay, next slide. So we made significant changes in a lot of the reason codes, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that now. Uh, in this one in particular, we added a reason code of 06, secondary required. Now, uh, a lot of what we've seen, especially on our side and the Postal Service side, especially UAA mail, is missing secondary information. So we get the primary information that may get us to the apartment complex. Um, but we are missing the second area information that tells the carrier what unit to deliver that mail to or what box to deliver that mail to. And so a lot of times 
I mean, just like with any industry, we have turnovers with our carriers. So sometimes that carrier knowledge that made new that made that carrier that knew that Mrs. Smith lived in apartment 101, and so they have a human readable text on the mail piece, and they could possibly deliver the mail. Um, but we're increasingly losing uh, that type of knowledge on our carriers, and so we really need that secondary information made available. And when it's not there, it results in a lot of rehandling of that mail because depending on the um, the, the type of mail, we have to return the sender. And so with this new code, we're going to indicate when that secondary is incorrect. We're going to indicate when it's missing. And we're also going to uh, uh, state when it's actually required. So again, more intel about those addresses as you're conducting your processing. Next slide. A lot of the uh, codes, the DPV codes, uh, we went through, reevaluated those um, to make them more clear and for us the clarification of what they mean. Uh, some state the same, as you can see here, there was no change to your Y, D, and N, I'm sorry, in your blank. But we did make some changes to S and N for more clarity. And as you can see here, what those new definitions are. And again, this, petition, this presentation would be made available to all of you uh, via the website. And so you can read in more details about those new descriptions. Okay, next slide. Okay, and if you haven't <laughs> saw by now that DPB is the workhorse for any of the address matching engines, and so this is where all of your intel is really being derived from. Uh, and so in this case here, um, all the DPB codes will be made available to mailers upon request as an option. Uh, we are testing the, the, the Cycle O software to ensure they have the ability to return these codes if requested. And so all vendors, all CAS certified software has this feature available within their code upon request. It is an optional feature, but it is uh, available upon request by the customer of that vendor. Next slide. Put no code. So again, we wanted to have more redefined and new footnotes to give more intel about uh, the addresses that are being processed. And as you can see here, we have uh, five new footnote codes along with their definition. And there's one in particular I want to spend a little time on on the next slide to talk about. So next slide, please. Okay, so on this particular slide, we go into more detail about each one of those footnote codes and what they mean. Uh, I'm not going to read through all of them. Uh, like I said, these are going to be uh, made available. The presentation is going to be made available to everyone. Uh, but I do want to spend a little time on R7 <clears throat> and what that means. So <clears throat> as we talked about earlier, the Postal Service does not necessarily deliver to all uh, street addresses. Um, however, our products and services are leveraged by more than just mailing industries. Uh, for the purpose of mail. Uh, it's also leveraged by other service-oriented industries, such as um, telecommunication, mobile communication. I like to use the example of uh, AT&T coming out of servicing a home to install internet, or what the case may be, but in order for them to do that, they need to know a physical, physical address to render that service to. And so a lot of time they use our products to validate an address. And if we did not have that address on our database, it will come back as an invalid address, although in technically that address does exist according to the local municipality. And so to help with that, to accommodate that, uh, if we are aware of the street style address, we will code it on our database on what we consider a R7 route. 
which uh, most of the time will come back as an R77 or R779 route. Now, this is considered a phantom route. Okay, it's not, it, it doesn't have any carriers assigned to it, uh, nor are the addresses active in our database, nor can you claim postage discount for them. Um, it's only there as an indicator to say, yes, we recognize that it is a valid street address according to the local municipality, although we do not serve that address. So that gives those industries that are leveraging our software for that purpose, uh, not for postage discount or anything like that, they can actually use it for that purpose. Okay, next slide. So CMRA, Commercial Mailing Receiving Agency. So currently, um, Recycle O, the software can return a pound sign for the extraneous uh, secondary information. And what do we mean by extraneous information? So 800 Village Walk, pound sign one, is the address of the CMRA in which we, Postal Service, deliver the drop to. So we take all of their mail that is destined to that CMRA and we drop it at 800 Village Walk, Suite 1 or pound sign one. Pound sign 101 is extraneous because it is the additional information that the CMRA needs to further deliver that mail into their own uh, private mailboxes. And so to help our, uh, not only our carriers, but also to help the mailing industry to identify when mail is being delivered to a CMRA, we have implemented the requirement that the extraneous pound sign must be now reflected as PMB, private mailbox. Okay, next slide. So this is slide is incorrectly labeled, and I apologize, I didn't go back and correct it, but this is speaking to sweet link uh, products. So all CAS software leverages our sweet link product, which basically improves the business addressing information by adding the known secondary information. So if an address is presented to the software and it's a business address, software must now call the sweet link product to determine if there's secondary information available to be appended to that particular address in which it was submitted. Now, the, the, the difference for this cycle is that the sweet information must now be retained with the address as well as the barcode information must be updated on the mail piece as well and be reflective of the sweet information that was returned from the sweet link product. So this gives, again, our carriers more visibility uh, on the actual mail piece. It has some visual information there, so they know instead of it's 901 Madison Avenue, they know now that it's going to Suite 283 Madison Avenue. Uh, before now, that information, that secondary human readable portion was not there. It was only in the barcode, which got it to delivery sequence, but there was no added information uh, for the carry to key off of other than the name of the business uh, and the address, the primary address. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> Again, this is just an example of the military addressing that was request, requested by the military. Again, no major impact to the, to the industry. This is transparent. It just, we wanted to test the software to ensure that it could handle the changes or the additional uh, codes. Next slide. Cross state, another visual here in this scenario is uh, showing the Iowa, South Dakota conflict where it was serviced out of Iowa is where the Postal Service reside, but the actual customer reside in uh, Akron, Iowa. I mean, Akron, South Dakota. Um, no, I had that backwards, sorry. 
Newtown, South Dakota is where the customer actually resided, and Akron, Iowa is where the Postal Service was servicing the customer. And so with the cross-state changes, the customer can now use their resident city-state of Newton, South Dakota, uh, versus where the post office is physically located. Okay? And again, we have about 6,300 of those. So um, it's not a whole lot, but it has a major impact to those residents that are affected by it. Okay, total DPS. And as you can see here, here's an example. You have 44 South Main Street, apartment 1, 2, A, and B all having the exact same delivery point. So therefore, these customers were eliminated from participating in our informed delivery service. So as you can see with the total DPS code uh, logic, we can now break that conflict. And so we also looked at any scenario where we thought that a conflict could occur even though one hasn't occurred yet. And so that's why you see some of the other scenarios here, uh, 301 half D Street. So that has a very high potential of conflict, conflicting uh, in the future. And so we are going, proceeding with applying that logic to any addresses uh, that may fall in those scenarios to ensure that the conflict does not occur. Next slide. All right. August 1st is the implementation date for all software to be updated with the SPICO O uh, logic and change it. So I've already received this question, so I'm going to go ahead and answer it here. Uh, any mailing list that was processed with SPICO N software? prior to the implementation of cycle O, that mailing list will follow the schedule in terms of use, use date for that particular list and still meet the qualification for postage discount, okay? So it still follows the same schedule. There will be no impact. There will be no requirement for the for mailers to take that list and reprocess it through cycle O unless the schedule has expired according to the current policies. Okay. So anyone who wants more information about what's being presented here as well as you can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, we have our Postal Pro website that contains all the presentation. And I think a version of this presentation is out there as well. Uh, that we also have a version of this presentation on, our, on the PCC website as well. Um, so basically you can go here to get any of the announcements, technical guides, uh, fact sheets, our executive summary about CAS. It's basically gonna reiterate a lot of what we discussed here today. Um, but for more information, our contact information is out here for our support desk as well. So feel free to go out and, and take a look at this if you have any questions or concerns about the um, CAS Cycle O implementation effective August 1st. All right. I think that's it. Thank you. So, question time. Okay, we'll give it a couple of minutes to see if there's any questions that anyone has for either Earl or Anchor. And if not, we will conclude the presentation. Okay, it looks like there is a question do you anticipate a new cycle in the next two years? Earl, would you like to answer that? Yes, sure. Um, 
You said two years, so I do anticipate us having a reoccurring cycle. I'm not con con I have not confirmed the frequency of those cycles. Uh, I do want them to be more frequent than every 10, 11 years. So I can with certainty say that it will be more frequent. Uh, I don't want to commit to when just yet because one of the things uh, I've been challenged with is to uh, revamping the certification process. Uh, right now, again, this particular process has been around since 1996, so it's time for an upgrade. It's time to modernize the way that we do testing. Um, and so before we implement another cycle, I want to make sure we change our process to be more uh, efficient, uh, quicker, uh, it should be extremely fast turnaround. And so to answer your question, I hope I'm answering your question. Um, yes, we are going to have more frequent cycles, uh, but I have not uh, determined the frequency in which we will have them just yet. Okay. Thank you for that information, Earl. There's another great question. Will mm -hmm. mail scheduled... I'm sorry, go ahead. Earl, were you about to talk? No, go ahead. Um, okay. Um, will mail scheduled for August be required to have cycle O for the informed delivery discount? I guess I'm a little bit confused about informed delivery discount. Well, what I believe what they're asking is if if they have a mailing that is scheduled to mail in August, uh, will it be required to uh, be certified for, through the Cycle O CAS database for informed delivery discount? And I so believe that answer is probably yes, right? So if you have one, you have a mailing scheduled for August. And my question would be, has that mailing list already been processed through CAS cycle in? And if so, does it still fall within the tolerable uh, schedules for as when that mail can be inducted to the postal service for a postage discount? If so, if it still falls within that schedule, then it does not have to be reprocessed in cycle O in August unless that schedule has expired. Got it. So if they yes. process through CAS prior to August and they are still within those that amount of uh, deadline days, they do not have to reprocess. Right. Right. So, but if not, then yes, they do have to reprocess. Great. Thank you, Earl. Um, another question, if you're ready. Will there be any new NTOA link changes in the future? Um, I always like to think there's going to be changes uh, because we're always looking to uh, see how we can enhance uh, our uh, software and logic and improve upon, but there will be many discussions with the vendors to see where those changes need to occur, what those changes need to be. Uh, so I don't want to say no. I just don't have a, uh, uh, a precise answer as to when. Uh, but, again, we're always looking to improve. You know, like I said, it was going on 11, 12 years since we had a CAS cycle, but here we are uh, with changes uh, that we have to implement. Uh, again, so uh, what our reporting that we get out of NCOA link and some of the reporting or requirements surrounding NCOA link, uh, I think we probably will see some future changes that we need. Uh, again, it's been around for many, many years, and so there is room to improve and to modernize that process as well. Great. Thank you. Okay, we'll give it another minute or so to see if anybody else has any more questions. And while we're waiting, I do want to thank Earl and 
for all this information that he's provided to us. Uh, I believe it was a great deal of very helpful information because I know that there have been a lot of customers that have asked us, well, what is the differences between cycle O and cycle N and what changes are there? So I think that this answered quite a bit of those questions that they had. And I, I do want to thank, thank the post office and Earl for providing us with all of this great information so that we can then uh, apply it to our day-to-day -day being as uh, a customer and as a vendor for the software, we can provide it to our customers also. Absolutely. Again, thank you for allowing me to speak with everyone and join your call today. Um, great job um, um, coordinating. Uh, I look forward to continue to work with Anchor Software in the future. Uh, you've been a great partner with the Postal Service, and so I really appreciate everything that you're doing. Here. And thanks for everyone who attended today. Great. Thank you. And again, I want to remind everybody of uh, this presentation is available through the USPS website. Plus, we will be providing a link to be able to uh, download the presentation uh, if you would like. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Great job again, Earl, and everybody have a great day. Thank you all.